And what is up guys, Technical Stinkers here, checking in on our 3D printing operation for today. So I own a business and it has nothing to do with 3D printing, but I got interested in 3D printing because I like the idea of machines that make money. So I'm trying it here at home, seeing if I can generate enough sales to hopefully scale it up and incorporate it into my existing business. I'm trying all the different facets of 3D printing, making a lot of mistakes because I'm not an expert at 3D printing. This is just exhibition, so if you want to follow along in the process, join me. Give me some tips and tricks along the way and have a good time. Be sure to subscribe. So the name of the game today is actually setting up for, I guess, the longer term with the Orange Storm Giga. As of right now, I'm here in my garage. And when I started out, I had just a few printers, so it wasn't a big deal running them off the circuit that feeds the garage. But as I expanded, I went ahead and stole some power from another place and brought it in over here. Now, this is a 20 amp circuit and I was running everything just fine, but once Big Bertha here showed up, um, I'm gonna have to do a little something extra. That's because the Giga takes, when it's heating up, about close to 1800 watts, and that's kind of, ma that absolutely maxes out a 15 amp circuit. It really gets close on a 20 amp. Now, it doesn't pull it continuously. It's only for, you know, five minutes or so while it, or five, 10 minutes or so while it heats up the beds, and then once it's in active print, it's pulling like maybe 500 maybe 600 at the top end. Uh, so it's not too bad. But the problem is, is that if everything's chooching along and then suddenly Bertha decides she's hungry and starts pulling 1800 watts, well, you get the idea, it's tripping. So I have a partially available 20 amp. I've got a, some garage things on it, like refrigerators and whatnot. So I wanted, I don't wanna rely on that one. The 20 amp that I stole is basically free minus eight amps if the garage door pulls. Um, I need to leave some room on that. And so what am I gonna do for, uh, for the Giga here? Well, I'm gonna have to steal more power and that's really the only way I'm gonna be able to do it. Now, this is just exhibition. This is just me doing it. This is not instructional. Messing around with electricity is very dangerous. I mean, I don't need to tell you the risk. So uh, if you do get a Giga or you, know, you need more power for your printers or whatever, I suggest you just call in an electrician. Yes, it will be expensive, but it's worth it for the peace of mind. But for me, I've got you know, some experience doing electrical, at least like, you know, in this residential form, the easy stuff. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna steal power from somewhere else, somewhere that's not as utilized. You know, and my problem is, is that my house, I have a 400 amp service at my house. You might be saying, well, don't you run crypto miners too? I do, but they run on my building service, which is 200 amps by itself. So I've got like 600 amps of power coming in and I'm getting close to the max. I pull a lot of juice. You wouldn't want to see my power bill. On top of that, my power rate is about seven and a half cents per kilowatt hour, which is like half of the national average. I don't know why it's so cheap, but you know, stay that way, please. Per point B, the Giga needs juice. All right, so I just came in from the outside, uh, checking the panel to see where I could take it from. And there's an upstairs bedroom that's generally unutilized. It's a 15 amp circuit. So my plan is to take the current 20 amp circuit that I brought in and dedicate that one to, uh, to the Giga and then steal from the 50 underutilized or unutilized 15 amp circuit to feed the other printers because all in worst case scenario they'll pull like a thousand watts and so that should be just fine um, my only issue is is that the run is mm, somewhat tedious so i'm up here in my attic so basically right there that wall right where that's going in that's where i'm taking it from and i got to bring it over here and down and this is the garage the place where we normally hang out but the first part of the garage the second part's all the way over there well, this is a great idea walking on studs and trying to film, but I was about to say that I'm kind of an expert. This is old hat for me at this point, walking around on these, but I don't often be, I don't often be filming while I do it. And you can tell I d I'm working up here quite often. I just leave my, I just leave my boards, my stepping boards in place. So yeah, that wall over there, that's a, I'm going to say a good 30 feet to where I am now. And then all the way to that wall, which is probably another 30 feet. So uh, the chase and plus going down, you know, I'm looking at probably, man, it's cold in here. It's that time of year, fellas. Uh, I'm looking at probably, you know, because I, I, I'm not laying it flat. I'm going to, you know, try to be clean about it. You know, not quite 100 feet, but 
enough to where it's a pain in the ass. All right, and so that's uh, probably the uh, that's probably on task for the entirety of, or not the entirety of the weekend, because overall the project will only take a few hours. Uh, but I got to interlace and do all these other things along with it. So probably maybe just poke in and out uh, with little tidbits along the way. Okay, so complete change in plans. I was going to run an actual circuit here, but I got to thinking about it and I'm like, you know what? It's a bit much. Uh, I'd have three separate circuits in my 3D print area. That's a little, it's a little bit for me. So Confucius say, do not kill a mosquito with a cannon. And that's kind of what I was doing. So what I'm going to do, Ill, not advised, certainly not advised, so I'm actually going to run an extension cord through a little pass-through and uh, power just two of the Cobras off an underutilized circuit in the attic. Um, the Cobras, at worst case scenario, are like 600 apiece. So let's just assume worst, um, and that's peak. So continuous, you know, they're like 300 or something. Uh, so that's not too bad for two of those. And if I can get those two off of this circuit, then that can run everything else, and then the Giga can have its own dedicated, well, somewhat dedicated 20 amp circuit aside from the garage door opener, which those uh, those newer models don't pull as many amps, at least as far as I can remember. Again, worst case scenario, it's pulling eight. Let's just assume worst case scenario, it pulls eight, that thing pulls 15. Uh, so if the Giga was going during its heat up phase and the garage door opened, you're looking at, well, the garage door spooling up. So you're talking about uh, overloading the circuit for you know, a few seconds. So that should be fine. It's not a GFI. Uh, again, I'm not too concerned about it because again, if I, I can, un, I could like know like, okay, the garage door is probably going to be opening in the next 10 minutes. Maybe I'll wait to start the print. Problem is I got this guy going and the P1P is still going. Now I'm not going to unplug it, but I do need to chase it and I want to chase it right there. And really, when you're going through drywall, there's no clean way to do it. So I'm going to try to be as clean as I can. I'm a little glow-in-the-dark fish stick here, and this is usually how I do it. So I'll just poke a hole where I want it, where I don't think studs are. I'll send this guy up just so I know where I'm coming through. And then I'll tape a bowl to the ceiling and make the breach from above. And that way I can pass through the cord and hopefully not have all the drywall dust come down on my print, on my printers, et cetera, et cetera. Again, this is ill-advised. It'd be better if I could like have the printers not running, but I've done worse things. All right, <laughs> I got my bowl up there uh, to catch all the remnants. And if you weren't unaware, I didn't know this until a few years ago, but uh, if you're looking for painter's tape, you're looking for the super ultra stickiest, the orange stuff is your best friend. It, uh, it sticks really good, but you don't want to leave it on too long because it will rip paint off. But, you know, if you're painting and you need the real good stuff, orange. All right, so I'm not sure I can really video too much of this because I have to balance on studs to do it. But our run is starting back there, ends over there. And uh, just using a standard 15 amp extension cord because again, it's only run two Cobras. So again, this is not ideal. And I'm sure I'll get comments like, you can't, you, you can't do that. Um, I mean, you can, <laughs> you, you know, maybe you shouldn't. But you know, it's not like I'm draping this thing over, uh, over top of a pile of cheese graters or something like that. It should be all right. So I'm going to get to it and uh, let's see if it works out. Right, so we got it in. It's up there, leaves a lot to be desired. It's a little um, unsightly, but I got a cable hide. I know I could have printed a cable hide, but I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna get one. Uh, pop it in there, because I'm not trying to take too long on all this. Right, and so, aside from all that fun, what else do we actually have going on in 3D printer land? Well, Character Model Girl is reaching the super ultra final stage. Looks like we've got, once it passes this uh, sort of beige part, it's all turquoise up from there, and so that'll be very fast, like an hour. And it's, I think the status bar, I mean, the status bar is like right there at it. Our rhinoceros is actually starting to look rhinoceros-ish. You can see you got his ears here. The finish is, you know, like, like I was saying, it's not great. Uh, and that's probably because no infill, nothing for it to sit on top of. But again, it's just to get a general idea and over here on the Soval, doing a couple more shrouds to replenish our stock. We emailed out, or we sent out the order ugh, this morning. I gotta find a better way to 
get up here because I can't see anything. Maybe I'll just hold my phone up here. All right, you're all clear. And obviously the Giga is quiet, but once Mr. Rhinoceros finishes up and the girl over here finishes up, then we can unplug everything, sort everything based on how it should be. Looks like the rhinoceros has, uh, I don't know, I, it's probably not, it won't finish today, but by morning for sure. All right, and so hopefully, ideally, once everything gets finished up, we can connect all the different printers to the different circuits that they have so we can load balance it out so I don't have to worry about things pulling too much. And, you know, because if I want it to be on and then I send a job to print and then it trips the breaker and then I lose all those prints. So... Uh, eager to get that sorted, probably do some cleaning up. You know, it's a busy weekend before Thanksgiving, but finally the big news just came across the wire. Like 10 minutes ago, I saw the email. I can't believe it. I sold one. That's right. I call it, her name is Feet Girl in a Box. Uh, <laughs> I sold a character model. I can't believe it. Uh, and it doesn't surprise me either because this is a large one. I mean, head for scale. Um, you know, this is one of the character models that I, I try not to feature as much anymore because they're, you know, a little racy and this is like, you know, kind of a somewhat, you know, she lifts out of here. The, the rest of her is in here and it is exactly what you think is inside of there uh, with the rest of her kind of sticking out of the top or braids come out the back. It's, you know, multi-part glued together. It's giant. Uh, it took a very long time to print. And it sold for 150 bucks, and so that's certainly in the profit. Uh, you know, I, I didn't have to do too many attempts at this, and this was back in like the the really formative time when I was kind of just getting a grasp of uh, the different settings and whatnot. But she came out great. Uh, I, you know, I'm I'm kind of blown away. I finally sold a character model. So now there's proof. Now I can go. Now I can triple down on character models. <laughs> uh, just kidding. I won't feature them that much. But if I sell one, I'll absolutely uh highlight it so feet girl in a box we speak your name we'll send you off to your very probably happy uh customer hopefully so this is the point in the video where i usually kick it over to my future self tomorrow morning to see how things worked out but i think i'll just probably close out the video and upload this tomorrow morning and then just start that process see how that works out be sure to subscribe to the channel close to 2,000 subscribers plan on doing another filament giveaway at that 2,000 subscriber mark be sure to like the video because it's a nice thing to do I'm the Tentacles. See you next time.